want to stand. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Okay, let's go. Sige. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you na, na everything that has happened this week, the past days, are, yeah, all of these, Lord, are reasons to praise you. No matter how bad or how good uh, the past days have been, you, you remain the same. You are true to your promises. You are the same, Lord, yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, God, we, we just dedicate this time to you. We pray, Lord, that as we worship, you would, you would just speak to us, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that everyone will receive something from you today. And we give you back all the glory, praise, honor, and thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen! Let's go!
you give him a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that you are always with us, that you are for us. Oh, Lord, I pray for those who feel that they are alone. I pray, Lord, that the reality that you are for us, that you are Emmanuel, God with us, will be just so evident today, Lord. I pray, Lord, for those who are weary with struggling. I pray, Lord, that they would find rest in you today as we worship. Oh, Lord, may we all be found in you.
from a life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I stand. Come on, lift up your voices and pray. above every name to the Lord of Lords to the King of Kings oh the Messiah the Savior of the world hallelujah praise you Lord oh we praise you God hallelujah it's good to worship the Lord today amen oh you know this is really a, a blessing and a privilege for us to come together this morning you know, to be here in this place and just sing songs of praise, songs of worship, and just enjoy the presence of God, enjoy the Word of God, enjoy the fellowship of believers. And you know, all over the world, people are looking for peace, you know, as evident, but evidenced by the things that are happening in the Middle East, the things happening in Europe and in different places of the world. But maybe you're here today, or maybe you're joining us online, and you're also searching for peace. You're looking for that elusive peace, peace of mind, peace in your, in your life. And some people may be thinking, if I could just have that job, if I can just have enough money in the bank, if I can just have that, that relationship, if I can have that man, if I can have that woman in my life, then I will have peace. And sometimes we go and strive and, and work really hard, you know, trying to, to earn it. I want that peace. I want that, that sense of security in my life. But you know what the Bible tells us is that real peace can only be achieved from God. He is the giver of peace. Amen. He is the giver of peace that surpasses all understanding. And it begins with our right standing with Him, our right relationship with God. And, and it starts with Jesus. And I would like to read this in Acts. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 4. Let me begin with uh, here. Just verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Salvation can only come through faith in Jesus Christ. And that salvation will result peace into our hearts. Peace with God. Peace within ourselves. Peace with one another. Without Christ in our lives, there can never be peace. So this morning, you know, as we continue to pray, I would just like to make this, this altar call. If you are here today and you are searching for peace, you are looking for peace, you want peace in your life, in your heart, whatever it is that you're going through, let me invite you to invite Jesus into your heart, to invite Jesus into that circumstance, into that relationship, into that struggle that you are that you are facing right now. So if that is you today, may I just invite you to come here in front and we will pray with you this morning. If you want that peace, if you want Jesus to bring that peace in your life, in your heart, in your circumstance, in your family, in your relationship, maybe you've been carrying that for many months or maybe even years, that that fight with your, with your loved one, with your spouse, with your children, with your parent, with somebody in your life, and you just can't take it any longer. You just want peace. You want reconciliation. Only Jesus can do that. 
So if that is you, would you come? And we'll pray together. There's, there's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Let, just let, let the Lord bring peace to you today. So would you come and as I invite some of our leaders and pastors to pray for those who will come. Anyone else? Is there anyone else? Let me say it in Tagalog. Siguro like, alam nyo eh, alam nyo eh. Para ngayon pa lang, maybe you're hesitating and, pero alam mo deep inside your heart that I, I need to be here. I need some prayer. I need Jesus in my circumstance, in my situation, in my relationship. If that is you, wag po kayong mahiya, lumapit po kayo dito and we will pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, for those who will not come, can I just invite you or encourage you to, to lay the, your hands on the person beside you and pray. Pray for that person. Pray for the peace of God to be upon that person in his or her relationship. And even for those joining us online, just lift up your hands to the Lord as an act of surrender, as an act of faith. Lord, saying, Lord, I need you. Jesus, I need you in my life. I need you in my in my family. I need you in my relationships. Oh, Rabasanda Yarakanda. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. If you're still praying, just continue to pray. But for those who are done, may I invite you to stand with me again as we conclude this segment of the service with prayer and thanksgiving unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we have peace with you in Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ. And we thank you that we have peace in this world and in this life because of Jesus Christ, because of your goodness, because of your love, because of your mercy, because of your presence, Lord, even in our darkest moments, God, even in our lowest moments, God, you are there. So, Father, today we continue to honor you, to bless you, to worship you, to put our faith, our trust, our hope in you, in Christ, in Christ alone. Hallelujah. And Lord, we commit to you the rest of this service, God, as you move in our midst, as you minister, as you set free, as you comfort, and as you strengthen your people today. Be honored, be blessed, be glorified, and be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord our best clap offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 10 o'clock service of Beginnings Church. If this is your first time to be with us, we welcome you. If you're joining us online and if this is your first time, comment in the comment section. Say, I'm new here, and we will get in touch with you. Amen and amen. So are you glad that you're here today? Amen. Can you look at the person beside you and say, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, yeah, no? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to worship God. Amen. So let me just give uh, a couple of announcements for us today. First of all, on October 21 and 22, uh, I believe this is going to be uh, next week. Saturday and Sunday is our two-day kids vacation Bible school. So inviting all parents, titos, titas, lolos, lolas, to bring your kids.
to attend. Ayan, no? napakaganda. The Names of God, a mini kids vacation Bible school. This is a great uh, opportunity for our kids to get to know God, to get to know the Word of God, to make new friends. And of course, di ba tayo rin to, to, meet, to make new friends as well para makasama yung mga ibang parents as well. So mark it on your calendar. I think you have to sign up to join. Ayan. And of course, next week is our five-day prayer and fasting starting tomorrow, Monday. We're gonna have uh, pray, online prayer times at 6 a.m. and 12 noon. That's going to be Monday till Friday. And then Friday evening, we're gonna have our face-to-face uh, prayer gathering at 8 p.m. That's, only, that's going to be from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. So we hope you can join us as we fast and as we pray. And also, uh, today we are updating our database. So I don't know if you, maybe you saw some blue sheets of paper. We encourage you to fill those up uh, later after the service and, and give it to some of our, one of our, uh, or a couple of our workers outside waiting. If you want it to be uh, through QR code, meron din po dun sa labas. So pwede po through phone na lang and QR code and fill up the form. And uh, don't you worry kasi uh, all these things, you know, uh, the handling of your personal data is in accordance with the Data Privacy Act. You know, hindi po namin, uh, ginagaranti po namin, hindi namin binibenta yung inyong data <laughs> sa mga iba-ibang kumpanya. Promise po yan. Ayan. Praise the Lord. So let's prepare our hearts to give today. You know, I don't know if you heard of the story of a husband who went out to the mall to buy his wife a gift. And he wanted and he wanted to buy his wife a gift because he loved her so much. And so he went to the most expensive store to buy her a dress. You know, the most expensive dress para doon sa kanyang lovely wife or loving wife. So he gets the, the dress ready. He gets a, a very nice box with a ribbon and everything. And then he puts a note inside that says, I'm always thinking of you. I'm always thinking of you. So he went home, gave the gift to his wife, and uh, I don't know if uh, how many husbands here will agree. And by the way, this, this is the, a disclaimer. Ano? This is not a personal anecdote. So you might think that this is a, you know, the story of uh, Pastor Louis. <laughs> but, but in reality, husbands are not really good gift givers. To their spouses. Oh, amen, no? I know and you're exempted to the rule. But generally speaking, generally speaking, husbands are not good gift givers to their spouses. You know, I remember when we were newly married and uh, believe it or not, I, I, I play badminton. You know, I don't know, you can't believe it. But uh, I, I used to play badminton and I wanted to play with my wife. So what I got her on her birthday was uh, yung badminton shoes got her white and red and, and when she tried it on it didn't fit and <laughs> and we couldn't return it anymore because I didn't hear the the pro tip of Pastor Albert ano, na parang just dapat within the seven days garang ganyan so we couldn't return it so she just used it out of uh, you know mercy and love for me and so going back to the story so when this husband gave the very expensive dress to his wife so when the wife looked at, looked at the gift, it's a red, a very nice red dress, but she didn't like it. So she just put it inside the closet, but she got the sign that says, I'm always thinking of you. And she put it like in front of the mirror where she can always see it. And you know what? It reminds us, well, it reminds me at least, you know, that God doesn't really care of the amount that we give. But he does care about the heart that is willing to give to him because of love, because of faith, because God, because we want to honor God. And that is what the wife did. You know, she appreciated the love of her husband as she bought the gift. And it reminds me of this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And it says in verse 7. Each one must do just as he has purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or, or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So as we give to the Lord today, regardless of the amount, let us give 
with cheerfulness in our hearts, with gusto, you know. I want to honor God. I trust the Lord. I love the Lord. That's why I will give today. Amen? Can I invite everyone to stand as we pray for our, our tithes and our offerings? Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, God, that you are the God who is a giver, the main giver, the one who owns everything. And today, we give back to you as our act of faith, as our act of appreciation and gratitude for what you have blessed us with. And Lord, to just say, we love you and we trust you. God, be honored today in our giving. Be honored with our hearts. Be honored with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So let's give to the Lord this morning. You may uh, come in front and drop it at the offering box. For those joining us online, you may give through our online giving. Praise God. Good morning. That was a very inspiring story, huh? Are you sure it's not your personal story? No, no, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, some of you may not know me. I've not been to Makati for several weeks. So if you are new to our church family, my name is Daniel Villa. I'm the oldest among the pastors. So as, as I always uh, say, I'm the only one allowed to preach more than 30 minutes. <laughs> Thanks to the age, okay? So younger pastors, wait till you're 68, right? Thank you for all of you who greeted me. It's a birthday call last week. Uh, and also thanks for praying for me as I visited a few pastors in Bohol. And we hope uh, to have more meetings there. Praise God. Amen. So are you ready for God's Word today? Amen. Okay. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. That's right. That's right. We're ready. Well, the last five weeks, we've been sharing about the names of God, right? We had the uh, intro. Uh, when I preach my intro, I talk about Yahweh, what, what that name means. And it really means that there is no other God like Him. He is not, uh, He is an exclusive club. We're done. God, Yahweh is, no one belongs in that club. Exclusive. Of course, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But Yahweh also reminded us that God is so high and lifted up, but He also goes down. He comes down. He is the God who makes Himself reachable. So that's the Yahweh. And from there, we talk about uh, Yahweh Yira, right? The God who provides. Then we talk about Yahweh Rapha, which is the God who heals. And then we talk about Yahweh Nisi, the God who fights our battles. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Yes. Wow. And last week, we talked about Yahweh Shalom, right? You know, the names of God, when the Bible talks, when God reveals himself, his name, it means three things. The first one is his names are not just revelations of who he is. But they are also revelations of his plan. So God's name tells us about God's intentions, what he intends to do. So when he talks about shalom, he really talks about a time and a place when there is no evil, where there is no destruction. There is, there, there is nothing that brings trouble to his people. It's just this perfect peace. So it does not only reveal a God who provides peace. He is also a God whose intention is to usher us into a world of perfect peace. Okay, and then secondly, the, the revelation of God's name in the Old Testament could be fully understood 
as we look at Jesus in the New Testament. So his names uh, were introduced to Christ, uh, to his names in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, we find a fuller, richer, redemptive name of God. His names are all redemptive, meaning to say there are ways that God wants to connect to us. And finally, the best part of his name is that when God reveals his name, he is inviting us to receive the blessing that his name provides. God is saying, this is my name and I want you to have it. This is my name and I want you to benefit from what I offer through this name. But at the same time, with the blessing comes a call to share the beauty of that name. Today, we're looking at another name of the Lord, and it, is, it could be found in one very unusual place. <laughs> because this morning, we're looking at Jeremiah. And if you've been following yung ating readings sa Jeremiah, you realize that we are moving into judgment country. Judgment country. And in, in John, Jeremiah 23, yung context po nito, it begins with chapter 21, where Zedekiah, the, the last king of Israel, the last king from the Davidic line, sends some invoice, some representative, to go to and, and look for Jeremiah and inquire. Ask him, would you please pray for us so that God might deliver us? Because every day, they are they hear the, the their walls being you know being attacked they're, they're, the the babylonians were all over uh, jerusalem and they 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 know that it's a, only a matter of time until the babylonians would come and destroy their city so here's the king uh, he he calls for help he says would you please pray that god would protect and bless us and you know what jeremiah said no God is not delivering you. You're going to die. Your children will die. The Babylonians will come. And they will lay seeds of the city. That's why it's a, the context is one of judgment. And I think God presents this amazing name. So that we might understand that behind the name Chedkano, which is the name for righteousness, is a God who, I mean, he does not play with sin. He doesn't want his people to live in sin. He doesn't want his people to disobey him because disobedience brings disaster into their lives. But at the same time, there is going to be a, a big, big surprise from our passage. So would you please uh, read the passage with me, if you don't mind? Uh, would you like to stand with me? So let's read the passage today. There are only uh, uh, six verses from Jeremiah 23, 1, 2, 3. And I've chosen a Bible version. I, I know some of you uh, might prefer the more modern ones. And the NIV, the NLT, they're good versions. But I remember my, my days in the seminary. <laughs> we love the NASB. And they have updated it, no? 2020 is the, is the newest uh, Bible translation, no? 2020. Okay, so would you read with me? Yes, let's read it together. Or you can read your Bible also. It's okay. And I appreciate those who brought their Bibles. Amen. Okay, go. Woe to the shepherds who are coasting the sheep of my pasture to Paris and are scattering them, declares the Lord. Therefore... This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the shepherds who are tending my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have, been, have not been concerned about them. Behold, I am going to call you to account for the evil of your deeds, declares the Lord. Now verse 3, Then, or therefore, I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their pasture and they will be fruitful and multiply. And I will also raise up shepherds over them and they will tend them and they will not be afraid any longer. 
nor be terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> and then verse 5. Verse 5, by the way, is uh, poetry in, the, in our scripture. So let's read the poetry. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, and he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live securely. And this is his name by which he will be called the Lord of righteousness. That's where Yahweh Chedkono comes from. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'd like to share three things from our passage today. Uh, the first two verses, you, you find the tragedy of a land uh, that is ruled by unrighteous leaders. The tragedy of unrighteous leadership. And of course, uh, from verses 3 to 4, and then the poem in verses 5 to 6, we find the joy of righteous leadership or the joy of righteous living. When we live righteously, wow, you will be surprised as to the blessings that God promises to those who live for Him. And then I will finish this teaching today by sharing with you the hope of righteousness. How can we be righteous before God? Let me, let me start before I, I do my teaching. Let me start with the truth and false. Are you ready for a truth and false? This is just my indirect way of inviting all of you every Saturday to join our doctrine service, amen? <laughs> so if you, if you could answer this correctly, uh, if, you, if you miss the right answer, you have to attend our next uh, Saturday, okay? Okay. So I must have perfect righteousness to be saved. Is this uh, true or false? Uh, how many think it is false? Raise your hand. Okay, wow, half of the congregation. What about those in, hi Dennis. <laughs> Glad to see you, brother. I miss you. And wh how, how many of you think this is correct, a, a true statement? You need perfect righteousness to be saved. Okay. Oh, wow, we have five, six. Oh, nobody else, only six. Oh, my. So I must declare that 99% of the congregation must join <laughs> our next uh, service, okay? Now, I will explain that, brother. Don't worry. Some of you might be saying, oh, really? Does God require a perfect righteousness for me to be saved? The answer is actually yes. You have to be perfectly righteous because God is holy, and the only way you can be connected to him is if you are righteous. And the problem, of course, is we are not. Oh, but that's, that's going too far ahead of the sermon, okay? Now let me start with looking at the tragedy when unrighteousness prevails upon us. Our text this morning, if you look at, if you look at the next slide, you will see here a, a chiasm. Uh, look at this, uh, A, B, C, and then there's an A, B, you know, in, 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 our, in Hebrew Neurex or in Bible study, we call this chiasm. The A, at the first line, uh, connects to the A at the last line. It's a chiastic, key, key. Those of you are familiar with the Greek uh, letters, it's the key, right? And, and here, the, the first three, actually, yeah, look, look at what, their kings, the shepherds refers to the kings, to their prophets. I mean, all of their leaders, their political, religious, uh, their leaders in the home, their parents, everyone, everyone in the land. They were just, they have just gone away from following the righteous Lord. So what's happening here? The Lord says, you are destroying my flock. You are scattering them. Uh, actually, the word destroy at the, in ASB, you use the word uh, perish, right? That they, you cause them to perish. You 
destroy my flock. You scatter them out and did not take care of them. That, that's the problem when leaders fail to do what they need to do in a righteous way. When they begin to lead in ways that do not reflect the righteousness of God, they end up destroying. You know the word destroy uh, is the same word as the word destroy in John 3, 16, that we need to put our faith in Jesus so that our lives may not be destroyed or perish, right? It means spoil. Bad leadership spoils the people. Instead of being useful to God, they really waste their lives, no? So they're, they're scattered, and then not only that, they are not cared for. In fact, it was so evil at the time that in Jeremiah chapter 15, if you look at that, look, look at this uh, chapter. And in here, you know, in chapter 14, uh, Jeremiah, of course, earlier God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, stop praying for the people. Don't pray for them. They've crossed the line. There's no hope for them. Judgment is going to come. But the people were unrelenting in their prayers. They still pray. They still offer the sacrifices. They're still asking God, Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy on us. In chapter 15, the Lord says, Then the Lord said to me, Even if Moses and Samuel were to stand before me, my heart would not go out to these people. Now, those two names are two of the examples of men who moved God. Men who appear to have changed God's mind, right? Remember Exodus 32? When after 40 days, Moses was with the Lord. And on his way down, God told him, you, you go down, Moses, because uh, your people, he won't even call them my people anymore. Your people, they have, they have turned to Baal. They have uh, made up another idol and they are, they are, they are ready to, to leave me. Go down. I am going to kill them all. And Moses began interceding. Lord, please don't do that. If you do, what will people say? What will people say? You delivered them out of Egypt, but you can't deliver them in the wilderness? And then later on in chapter 32, Moses said, but if you still insist on killing and wiping out the people, Blot me out first. Kill me first. Lord, kill them but over my dead body. Incredible. There's no one intercessor like Moses. And yet God says, even if Moses would intercede for the people, I would not listen. And then the, those in red letters, in red color, God said, send them away from my presence. Let them go. Do you remember those, that phrase, let them go? Remember that? Who said that? To Pharaoh, right? It was spoken to Pharaoh. And who spoke it? Moses. Moses comes to Pharaoh and says, God, Yahweh says, let my people go. You have enslaved them for centuries. They have called on me and now I heard them and I'm going to bring them to the land of promise. Let my people go. And all the powers in the world could not stop Moses and God from delivering his people. But here, the people who were delivered were being undelivered. Do you see that? Do you see what unrighteousness does? To a people. What unrighteousness do to people who refuse to return to God. People who insist on living however they want. And <laughs> sadly expect God to be on their side in their times of need. Look, look at that. Now uh, there's another verse. Uh, it says here, I will make them abhorrent. To all the kingdoms of the earth because of what Manasseh. King Manasseh is the longest king in Israel. He's, 
you know, he ruled for over 50 years. 50 years. David, 40. Solomon, 40. But Manasseh, very long. And he led Israel so far and so long away from God that God says, enough. And sadly, the, those who followed him, the, the next king, Manasseh had a Josiah, who was a good king. But then he was followed by the three other kings. And Zedekiah was the final king. And all of them just continued the rebellion against the Lord. And so at his time of need, he comes to God and says, would you please help me? And God says, no. God says, no. I think this passage reminds us today, if we move to the next slide, uh, that really righteousness would bring joy and exaltation and salvation to a people, but sin condemns you know, and disgraces or reproach any people. When, when we talk about God being righteous, when, God, when the Bible says that God is righteous, that's the other part of righteousness. That God is righteous, that he must punish sin. Because if God ignores sin, if God says, okay, let's forget about it, then God is no longer righteous. He's no longer the perfect and the good God and the holy God that we love and serve. And that's why the people are suffering the consequences of their actions and decisions. And that's why it's so important no, to really pay attention to God. So some of the problems that... Uh, that, that uh, happened no? because of the rebellion against God. There is the decay of their society, moral, spiritual, economic, and social decay. I included there uh, Jeremiah 17. No? That was our reading uh, yesterday. And, uh, you know, in chapter 17, Jeremiah or God describes sin in very uh, strange way. First of all, Sin is like an engrave something into a big stone. It's like it's, it's, it's hardened. It cannot be easily removed or it cannot be removed. You know, parang it's a big problem. And then secondly, he, dis, he likens sin into a dying plant. A, a plant, a young plant that is, that is growing on a hardened soil. There's not enough soil, moisture, there's... And it's, it's the plant is dying. And God is saying that that is what happens to people who live his rule, his kingdom. People who live however they want. They, they do not become more alive. They, they wilt and die away as part of their, the consequences of their sin. And then, of course, he talks about sin as a corrupted heart. Chapter 17 of Jeremiah you know, when I was a young Christian, this was one of the scriptures that uh, caught my attention. But I used to quote it in Cebuano, you know, na yung kasing-kasing, yung puso daw ng tao could be so hardened that our hearts are corrupted. Sin corrupts the heart. It corrupts your longings, your desires. It, it corrupts the things that you want unless you deal with that sin, unless you allow the righteousness of Christ to transform you. The heart is deformed. It loves what God hates. And it hates what God loves because of a deformed heart. And the final picture in Jeremiah 17 is that of a partridge. I, I don't, I, this, uh, partridge is a wild, wild bird. And the description here is the partridge is... A unique bird because it does not hatch uh, his own its own egg, but it looks for eggs that were laid by other birds and it hatches them. Pa parang the, the picture is that when when unrighteousness, when sin gets over a people and a land, greed takes over, corruption takes over, and people take what is not their own, what does not belong to them. They steal, they, they do everything 
So they enrich themselves at the expense of others. That that sound familiar? It's a result of a society that is led unrighteously. So, uh, can you go back? Uh, can you? That, there you are. That, then, of course, the other problem is the absence of God. The absence of God's word and favor. Now, I was sharing this morning that sometimes we don't. We don't appreciate the word of God that is preached to us. And, and yet, the reality is, if we are not listening to the prophetic word God is giving to us, then we are listening to something else. Now imagine, imagine. And that's why those of us, those of you of younger kids, you know, with the, with the now generation, you know, our, our kids, they are faced with so many, this overloaded information age that we have when right and wrong is not clearly defined when what is good and what is terrible i mean people uh, you know insist uh, it's up to you like uh, what is good is up to me i define what is right and what is wrong now can you imagine the implications of that kind of a value system and that is one of the judgment that come on people, on families, on, on individuals, on nations that disregard the word of God. Because if they turn away from the truth, then God will give them the lie. So loved ones, you know, the tragedy of unrighteousness really. And, 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 and the last one, did you notice that, that thing there at the end? Uh, the last two ones is God working against them. God, God told Zedekiah, Zedekiah, I'm not helping you. I'm actually against you. I'm fighting against you. I will make sure that my judgment will come to you. And the most terrible judgment God gave is he's telling Zedekiah, Zedekiah, you will be the last among David's Davidic king. If you look at the New Testament, you will discover it's not through Solomon. The next king will not, be, will not come from Solomon's line. It's going to come through Nathan, one of David's sons. Different, right? Because the Old Testament, as a part of the judgment over, against their sin, God, God says, you're done. You're finished. You're finished. You know, when you live... When you live away from God, I mean, do not expect life to work well. It's like when you are in a lighted room like this, and outside is dark, and you live a lighted room, do not expect to carry the light with you, right? Because once you start moving away from the light, then expect darkness, to come, and the farther you move away from the light, the darker your life will be. And it's not because that's what God wants for you. It's because of your foolish decision to live your own life however you want. And perhaps God is speaking to us today. We can no longer afford to live that way. The Lord of righteousness has come in order to save us from that kind of life. Amen? Amen? And I'm going to show that uh, to you later, how we could go to that. Now, uh, se the second one that we will see today is this joy of righteous leadership. The first was the tragedy, but now comes the joy. When righteousness comes, when the righteous leader shows up, there's going to be some reversals and uh, and, and that's what we see here, unexpected reversals. Can you say that word? Unexpected reversals. When, when you meet the king, the righteous king, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, when you hear about his rule and you say, I'm done ruling over myself. I'm done submitting my life over to other kings. I want him to be king over my life. Wow, you will see Unexpected reversals. If I don't know if you still remember the first sermon uh, that Pastor Albert preached when we had that series on restoration, he preached from some, right? Uh, where, where people said, It's like a dream. 
it's like a dream. Some of us are really surprised as to how gracious and good God has been to us. Amen? You know, some of you know I came to Christ when I was 18. That was 1974. And since then, I've been living for Him. I've been sharing His Word. And I tell you, <laughs> it's a big surprise how amazing, how good the Lord is. Amen? So, unexpected reversals. What, what are some of these reversals? Let me show the text first, no? If you look at this text, in verses 1 to 4, actually there's a chiasm, no? And yung, uh, yung sa, sa first line, woe to the shepherds. And then in the last line, in verse 4, God says, I will raise up shepherds who will shepherd over you. You see that? The reversal, the problem, and now God is giving the, the cure and the solution. And B, you yourselves scattered, uh, thrust out, have not taken care of them. But then in the second the second part of the, uh, the chiasm, God says, I myself, look at that, I myself will gather, will gather, uh, will, will gather and bring back the remnant of my flock. God is saying, he's going to do something. And what is in the middle? Well, what is in the middle is, behold, I will take care of you. Actually, I made sure that you do not misunderstand that that passage, so there is an angry figure there. Because, because God says, I'm going to make you account. I'll make you accountable for all your sins. And that means judgment for the nations. But you will, you will see, Paul. You will, did you notice now? You expect that because the king and the dynasty and the nation is under God's judgment, that everyone will be under his judgment forever. But the good news, the good news of the, the good news of the scriptures is judgment does not have the final word. There is an offer of reversal, and th that is true to some of us. Some of you maybe you're, this is your first time to come, you know, and you feel condemned. You live uh, thinking, is there any hope for me? You know, again, the good news is judgment does not have the final word. It does not have to be, because Good news, there is redemption that is coming. So let, let's look more at this. Look, look at the next uh, slide here. The Lord says, I will gather you. I'll bring you back to their pasture and they will be fruitful and multiply, right? God, God promises a, a blessing, right? He will flourish. There's going to be a flourishing that will, that will take place. And in the next uh, verse, verse four, he, he will provide shepherds and uh, I love that part uh, in the last se two second line. Last two second line, no one would be missing, the Lord says. They will no longer be afraid. How about that? Now, God is saying there's, there's going to be some reversals that when you submit to this new king, this king who is righteous, wow, wow, there's, there, there is the, the blessing of a, of, of a life free free from fear, you know, and terror. And also he says that you will be kept, you will be preserved by this king. So let, let's look at some of this blessing po. Tingnan natin. So they were scattered, but now they're gathered. <laughs> That's who we were, no? Before Christ came into our lives, we were scattered. We were a lost sheep, but now we've been found. Can you say amen to that? Have you been found? Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, that's beautiful. They were hungry. They, had, they, they were not eating spiritual food. They, they lived by junk. No, but now they, are, they have pastors. They have shepherds who take care of them. And they were fruitless. But now they are fruitful and multiplying. There is a new kingdom productiveness that has come into their lives. And they are attended. You know, and they are unafraid. And there is, there is preservation. No one is missing. So what is the point of this? The point here uh, is that God is going to restore. No, There's a restoration that is taking place. Earlier, we talked about the, the loss of God's favor and presence. God is there, but His presence is a presence of judgment. 
Imagine that. God is present, but His presence is not the presence you, you would enjoy. It's the presence that makes you hide from God. But God is saying that could be over. Hiding could be done away. It could be done. It could be finished. You know? Because uh, now you could truly follow Him. Right? There is a restoration and the most beautiful word. When we submit to the King, the resulting of the flourishing of people and society. You know, when you, when you submit to the righteous king, when you submit to him, when you trust him, when you, do, when you do life, when you do family, when you do business, when you do everything according to his will, according to his standards, the promise of the Lord is a flourishing could take place. The opposite, of course, is if you just do whatever you want, there's a, a deflourishing, no? There is a destruction that would take place over our lives. That's why today God is, is speaking to us, reminding us, warning us, no? That only through righteous leadership and living that that could lead to human flourishing. Now, I have a scripture here, I think. Uh, yeah, the next slide. Yes, this is a scripture given or a statement given by, by David, no? Uh, God spoke to him about what could happen if he led righteously. <laughs> Look at this. The, the God of Israel spoke and the rock of Israel said to me, when one rules over a people in righteousness, what, what would happen? When a dad rules his family in righteousness, when a mom mothers his children in righteousness, when a government rules in righteousness, Wow, what could happen when, when they rule in the fear of the Lord? He is like the light of morning at sunrise on a cloudless morning. How about that? Isn't that beautiful? We may not, you may, you may be saying, huh, what does that mean? Well, you may not know everything that, that it means, but it really means really well, right? Imagine that. Like a morning of sunrise, a cloudless morning. There is a, a psalm. I think 37, where he talks about your righteousness rising up like the dawn, right? Can you imagine that? that that's the blessing of righteousness when we live by his rule and when we live by uh, the king, like the brightness after rain that brings grass from the earth. Well, a flourishing. Do you want flourishing in your life? Amen. Do you want God to flourish you? Amen. Well, flourishing happens with righteousness. And with righteousness, righteousness can only be given. We could have righteousness only with Yahweh, Ched Kano. So let's look at that right now. Let's look at uh, the hope of righteousness, right? So you remember our question earlier? Uh, uh, truth and false? <laughs> okay. I must have perfect righteousness to be saved, right? What do you think? Can you be saved without perfect righteousness? Do you need perfect righteousness to be saved? If you answered, if you answered no, then again, you have to attend our <laughs> Saturday doctrine, okay? Because the answer is yes. You need to have perfect righteousness to be saved. The problem is we don't have it. Uh, so it's not a self-made self. It's not a, an earned righteousness. It's, it's the righteousness of another. You receive perfect righteousness from someone else. And that's why the, the key to righteousness, the key to salvation is via this Messiah who has come into the world. So l l let's look into this. Ano po? Ayan. Uh, next slide. Again, uh, verses 5 to 6, it tells you, Yahweh will raise up a righteous branch. That's the hope, right? Righteous branch or a righteous shoot. There's a shoot. The king will rule wisely. He will bring justice and righteousness. In his days, Judah will be delivered and be secure. Yahweh will name him Yahweh, a righteousness. I didn't have time to explain this in the morning at the 8 o'clock. But let me share with you what does... Yahweh, a righteousness, mean? So just uh, quickly, uh, it, it really means uh, Yahweh Chedkano, 
refers to two things. Number one, it refers to his nature. He is the God who is righteous. There is nothing wrong with him. He lives completely and perfectly according to his word, according to his will, according to his nature. There's no contradiction with him. I mean, he is the standard of everything that is right. That is Yahweh, our righteousness. But, but there is an implied uh, truth here that is brought to light. No, it comes clearer to us in the New Testament. Uh, and that is, not only is Yahweh a, a, a God of righteousness, but also the result of his saving and ruling is an expression of his righteousness. Did, did you get that one? Uh, you remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, where, where Paul said that Jesus, who did not know sin, became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. He does, he does not say so that we might become righteous in God. Hello? Did Paul say that? Righteous in God? That would be correct. That would be correct, but he uses something that is very unusual. That those who receive the benefit of the finished work of Christ on the cross, those who rely on the righteousness of another and not their own, those who repent of their own righteousness because they know that will never be enough to save them. But those who turn to this King and Messiah who is righteous. He says those who do that, those who turn to him, those who live by him, those who receive his righteousness in their lives, and those who will begin a righteous life, they are the righteousness of God. Hello? There's a difference, right? God is righteous, but you and I could be displays of the righteousness of God. You and I, you know, I, I was looking at this sermon this weekend. I was saying, Lord, wow. When I, when I saw this, I said, I never saw this before. But yeah, I realized I've been asking that question. Why righteousness of God? Why uh, those who turn to Christ become the righteousness of God? No? And then I, and now, I, now I see that we can be displays, demonstrations. We can be examples we can be fruits of how righteous God is. We can be the result of this God who, yes, while Israel deserved judgment and death, and yet God would say, but judgment will not be the final word over you because I will show mercy. I'm going to show you mercy. And how will God show Israel? How will God show you and I mercy? You see, God cannot just let go our sins. He cannot just say, okay, forget all your sins. That would make him unrighteous. And you do not want to follow a God who does not deal with sin, right? If, you, if you're familiar with Romans chapter 3, Paul says, because of what happened on the cross, it is proven that not only is God is just, he is righteous, but he's also the justifier of those who turn to him. Meaning to say, God is just. Because he does not ignore our shortcomings and sin. He pays for them. This righteous judge, if you look at the next slide, you can see that he is a righteous branch. Uh, look at that. He's a righteous branch. A shoot, actually, is the Hebrew word. A shoot. Coming out, a young shoot coming out of that cut trunk. And it's a picture, perfect picture of Jesus. It reminds us of how God is righteous that he could forgive our sins. Now, on the cross, we see his mercy. Because out of mercy, he would do the righteous thing, which is pay for your sins and mine. So the, the answer to the question, how, how do we receive that righteousness? How can we become or receive his perfect righteousness? Well, he does it on the cross for us. Let me show you my two final pictures here. Uh, 
as we close today. Look at that. This is the Lord our righteousness. He sees our sins. We are under judgment, but He pays for our sins. And not only does He pay for our sins, He also imputes His perfect righteousness to us. You can be clothed with a righteousness that only Jesus can provide. Some of us have been, some of you have been trying all that you can to be righteous. And you realize this won't work. Because that's not how the gospel works. Christianity is this righteous king who gets cut so that after he dies, after he rises from the dead, those who turn to him could be clothed with a righteousness. And that's when the reversal takes place. Amen? Do you want a flourishing? The flourishing can take place only with the clothing of righteousness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Yeah? Let, let's, uh, let's, let's sing some songs. And I would like to offer you an opportunity today. You know, be, think about your relationship with God. Is your life flourishing? Are your relationships flourishing? Is your family flourishing? Is your walk with God flourishing? You know, a life that is not flourishing uh, could, you know, could mean many things. But possibly it could mean that we have not surrendered fully to the righteous branch. And that's why if we long for the benefit of Yahweh Chetkano, we must surrender. We must admit our wrong. We must admit our, our self-efforts. That they are not sufficient to bring the peace, to bring the joy, to bring the life that Jesus provides. And the only key, the only, the only way to receive that righteousness is to turn our lives over to Him. So let's let's sing and celebrate the song prepared for us. It's really a beautiful song.
is God. What a king. There is no other king like Jesus. You know, all the kings of the world, they demand their subjects to die for them. Have you heard of a king like him? Do you know a king like him? There's no king. There's, there's not a king in the world like this Messiah, this righteous Messiah. Because he is righteous, he gave his life. And those who submit to his rule will have the flourishing. But you know what? It requires what the Bible says, faith and repentance. It requires a turning away from sin. It requires our turning away from all our idols. It requires a turning of all to Him. So as we, you know, uh, uh, before we live today, I'd like to give you that opportunity. We prayed for those who are seeking for peace. And we had good prayer this uh, earlier. But right now, I'd like to, I'd like to propose to you, I'd like to present to you that really the only way you could have peace is when you start when you stop self-rule when you stop self-rule when you give up self-rule and submit to his kingly rule let Jesus be king over your life many of the troubles of your life are due in fact because of our failure to submit to his kingship so if, if there's a lot of suffering pain struggles in your life and right now you 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 see it as coming from that failure to submit to him as king oh the messiah is saying come to me come and i'll bring order into your life come and i will bring a flourishing over into your life maybe there's one or two Bob, come. This is your first time you hear the good news of a king <laughs> who is so good and righteous. A king who offers his perfect righteousness to you. If you believe him, you will have that righteousness. Is there anyone here? You heard the preaching and you are saying to yourself, Wow, I love this. I love this gospel. I love this message. And I want, I want Jesus as king over my life. Would you just raise up your hand? The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Anyone else? You want him to be king over your life. I tell you, if you say yes to the Lord, you will have to say no to a lot of things. But don't worry. That's the best decision to say yes to Jesus. Praise God. I'll pray. And those of you who raise up your hand, okay, if you could... Uh, stay for a while so we can continue to pray for you. Father, I thank you for the good news of Yahweh Chetkano. What a name. What a name. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege, the gift to become righteous because of you. The gift, Lord, to have a perfect righteousness, not a made-up, self-made righteousness but a righteousness only you can give. It's a righteousness that flows out of your perfect life, of your sacrificial death on the cross, and your resurrection. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, would you continue to speak to us? Lord, those who have been relying on their religion, their good works, their self-effort to feel good, Lord, would you demolish that and instead let us all receive the real the real good news of a king who gave his life so that we could be righteous before him bless your people today lord as they go and share the amazing news about yahweh chetkano lord let more people more families let there be healing deliverance let there be light coming and being received by people as your people go to share the good news of Yahweh Chetkano. The Lord bless you, loved ones. Amen. Good morning to all.
Thank you for joining our worship service today. We hope that the praise and worship of God inspired you. We hope that the prayers uplifted you. And we hope that the preaching of God's Word encouraged you and challenged you to live a life according to God's purpose for all of us. I hope that every week you will join us in worship online and that you can share this to your family and friends, classmates or office mates or neighbors so that together we may come before the Lord praising Him for all that He has done, giving thanks and praise to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you. See you again next Sunday.